Hey folks, Mac T, and uh, I'm doing this video, sort of rehashing a little bit of it, uh, you know, for the beginning part here. Uh, if you watch on the follow-on video, I may misspeak a few places, but I'm going to clarify that. Uh, vehicles run on what we call an open loop and a closed loop, and uh, I sort of switch my words, and you'll see that later in the video, you know, just got confused. But uh, anyway, uh, what's the difference? Well, when a, you got a cold engine start, uh, a lot of your starting has to do with the EPA. Well, the problem is you cannot get EPA requirements met at a cold start. You just can't do it. It's not possible. Uh, therefore, uh, what manufacturers are allowed to do is go into what they call the open loop cycle, which means that uh, when you start it, the engine RPMs are going to be higher, the fuel air mixture is going to be uh, managed by the PCM, and there is nothing anybody can do uh, as far as uh, changing settings or anything like this. And what I'm saying is, is that you're overriding the uh, emissions control of the of the car because you're dumping more fuel in you're trying to keep a higher idle you're trying to warm it up you're trying to warm up the cats to 950 degrees or so to light them off to get them working because they're cold and they're not going to function and everything else is not functioning right so therefore the open loop just doesn't pay attention to any of the sensors and uh, and it just bypasses everything and that's why you have the high idle and everything when you first start up. And as we tested, we saw how long does it take for the high idle to drop down to a lower idle. And then thus start going into what we call a closed system, a closed loop. Uh, what it's then doing is it's starting to take inputs from the oxygen sensors, uh, from uh, the fuel sensors, from the lambda, from everything that's going on. It's taking all these measurements from all that and that's why it's caused close because now we got different sensors closing off the loop and saying hey you have to adjust this to go over here to do this the the you know the the front end of the oxygen sensor reads what the fuel's going for the exhaust in and then the back end's reading what's coming out and it's telling the other one what to do it all this is then your closed loop uh, and all these sensors injectors and everything else is participating in the operation of the engine but when it is cold started, it bypasses everybody. You know, if the oxygen sensor says, hey, you got too much fuel, you know, the you know, PCM basically says, bug off. I'm trying to keep this car running. And uh, that's really what happens. So uh, as I say in the later in the video, I get the closed and open loop. But I got the definition, right? I just say, said the wrong word. So I'm trying to clarify this here at the beginning so that nobody gets confused. So hopefully this does help you all understand the open loop and the closed loop is what I'm trying to prove in these edges and see which one actually warms up faster. Does the Duratec warm up faster than the EcoBoost or does the EcoBoost warm up faster than the Duratec? Let's go ahead and check it out. Let's go ahead and start figuring out. I'm going to be using my, I, my little tablet here with the uh, Forescan and we're going to go ahead and uh, use the OBD Lynx MX, not the Plus. I've had this MX in this uh, Edge for a lot of years, and uh, it just runs like a champ. And then we'll move it over to uh, Lilu, the 2019, and we'll go ahead and plug it in and get it all set up, and we'll use the Forescan programming to document everything when we do a cold start. We'll have things like uh, the the engine coolant temperature, transmission fluid, cat temperature, and a few other PIDs that I will add on there for uh, parameters, and we'll see what those do. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and give her a cold start, but first we got to turn the key on and make sure that the MX, pl MX is plugged in and recognized and ready to go. And I can see by the lights that it has woken up because I turned put the key in. So let's check that out real quick. Now as you can see the MX is already, it's ready to go. Bluetooth is on and everything else. So let's go ahead and uh, turn the key on one notch and get the uh, tablet fired up and get it recognized. First things first is we turn the key on and then we go ahead turn my radio off 
and let's see key check charging system I think oh Lou's got a battery problem so we're gonna have to deal with that but anyway as you can see we got the foreskin ready to go we just hit it right there and it will of course cycle and then it says OBD links MX and it has everything that it's loading up as far as my uh, cans and all this other stuff that it is hooked up to as you can see and we have the green light so what we do is we go down here to the uh, dashboard and we can see we have the cat temps, we have the engine coolant temp, we have the EQ rat, which is fuel air mixture. We're not going to worry about that. We have long term and short term fuel trims, and uh, we want to add one more. So we go here and we want to add our transmission temp. If I can find it. I don't think I got it here set up for this one so we'll just go ahead we won't go wor worry about the transmission temp because I don't think that's gonna be much of an issue anyway and I don't wanna confuse you all for that aspect of it so let's see do I have engine idle No, we don't have that there either, so. Oh, there we go. We got engine idle. We got RPM right there. So, we're all set. We don't want to disconnect. And there's our PIDs that we wanted to have, all of them. So we got that. Now we can go to our dashboard. And I can actually expand that out a bit. We don't want to do that. There we go. I went and expanded it too much. So we can monitor it right here as far as what we're doing. And uh, can definitely take care of everything we need to. So we'll hit the play button. And there you go. We have them. Trying to get this set up the best way we can. I know there's some reflection here that we're going to see. So we'll go ahead and start Lou. And I do want you to all listen to what Lou does when I go to start her because she's not feeling well. Watch the RPM. Oh, she ran good. She's been fluctuating on me, but she started right up. So... Maybe it's just the battery and the throttle body and all that dead battery stuff I had going on. But uh, as we can see, the time right there, we'll, we'll monitor it by seconds when I edit the video. But 1442, and we're looking at the RPM right there. And we want to see how long it's going to take to drop down to 600 RPM for this uh, 3.5 Duratec to warm up and go out of closed loop to open loop. Shouldn't take but a minute or two. Uh, in the meantime, uh, the MX Plus, which is a video I'm going to be putting out, uh, will definitely tell you what's going on. And if you guys wanted to see, let me... Uh, position the camera here and show you what the MX Plus is doing or the MX is doing while it's giving us all this information. I think you can see uh, 
yeah, plenty of lights going on and off and everything else uh, that are running. So, yeah, it's sending us data. That's how it works. And the MX Plus won't be any, you know, really any different than that. But that's what you'll be seeing while it's sending you data. Now I do have to... Now keep in mind, uh, this Foreskin program also, uh, I had it on my phone. I just went to my Google Play and I downloaded it onto my tablet under my Google email address and everything else, you know, for my play. So I was able to only pay once and I can use it on multiple devices. Uh, this is not the Windows version. This is the Foreskin Lite, which allows you to do all sorts of weird things. And uh, uh, I will cover that more later as I go through and uh, check things out. But for now, you can actually monitor your vehicle on these little, just these little things. And uh, that definitely helps. We can see that uh, our RPM focus uh, is uh, 1200 RPMs basically uh, long term fuel trims not too bad uh, she's settling down quite a bit from what she was because when I had that dead battery everything got reset it was running up in the 20's so uh, the short terms of course are right there and then the cats since we are in high RPM, the cats will generally run about 950 once we get down to idle. Uh, so I'll show you what that does. But right now, we're still at high idle at uh, 1,234 uh, RPM. So we're still running there. And then, of course, our fuel air mixture not giving us any problems. Engine coolant temperature is 111 degrees. What do you think it will be at? when we get to uh, our idle temp. Now keep in mind my temperature says 21 degrees. So we've been at this now. There we go. It just dropped. It's dropping. Let's see what it gets down to. It's going down. Still a little bit on the high side. It should drop down to about 600, I believe. Then we'll be at our full warm idle. Uh, 120 degrees, basically, for the temperature. And our long terms have definitely went up because we're in idle. As with our short terms. And we'll see what temperature does it drop down. Because I know idle is about 600 when it's fully warm. So we'll see what it is once we get to that point. If we ever get there. Temperature again is 124. There she's dropping again. There you go. We're in full regular idle now. And it is 1447. So I'll count up the minutes and seconds it took uh, to get to this point. And we can see that our cat temps, like I said, they're going to be dropping down to about 950. And that's usually where it is at idle. And about 14, 1500 at highway speed. So anyway, that's pretty much it on that, folks. That's how long it took. So let's go over, plug in this uh, same device into the 2019 and see what's going on with it. And it looks like my check battery light is gone. Huh. I'm having problems with batteries, folks. I know I've been touting that Odyssey, uh, but I think when I discharged it to almost zero, I think I, uh, <laughs> it's my fault. I, I, I knocked it to its knees. So I don't know about the reliability of the battery at this point, but uh, you know we'll we'll see we'll see what happens. I got to do a health check on it and everything else later. But uh, for now, we're just testing out to see what Lou does, and uh, we figured it out. So let's go over to Lee Lou, the 2019 EcoBoost 2.0, and see what that beast does.
now we got inside and uh, oh Lilu thinks it's 31 degrees but it's not 31 so we'll we'll go with that but we got to connect now keep in mind the uh, location is over on the left side of the footwell for uh, plugging in on the 2019 so there we go now we got to connect see what that does got the yellow light it's looking now there might be a bit more set up for this one because right now it's set up for uh, Lou so we may have to uh, do vehicle once we get the green light it should automatically read what it is and it can take a couple minutes for uh, a new vehicle to pop up so once it does it'll change green and uh, we'll be able to go ahead and uh, start getting things going so it's gonna turn me into a liar here and make me uh, wait my tablet doesn't want to stay on that long so I'll come back to you once we get it connected up it shouldn't take but a minute or two alrighty we got the green light so let's go to vehicle we have the OBD links and we notice that we have a model 2019 Ford Edge so it's automatically uh, loaded up the data on that let's see what the dashboard says dashboard says we have nothing so we want to go in and we want to select PIDs inside the PCM okay we'll just do OBD 2's and then we'll add PIDs and we want the cat temp we want the engine whoops we want engine coolant temp we'll take the rats and uh, what else what else do we want long term fat fingers holy cow there we go we want the RPM we want the short term fuel trim keep in mind there's only one bank and what else do we have well, we could do throttle body position I guess uh, that should put us where we want to be we could do the air intake temp so we know what we got there too but uh, I think that's pretty much it that we want so we got everything highlighted as you can see what we're going to be doing so we want to go and we want to select dashboard and as you can see everything's at zero so I'll hit play and I ain't gonna make them big because then you can't see them all but I am going to go ahead and start it right now hold on a second I'll be right back okay we're gonna go ahead and start it it is uh it is 1455 that we have here and here is what we have our engine coolant temp okay keep in mind I think these may be I don't think it's minus seven it might be on Celsius so we'll have to go through and check but what's our RPM RPM is 1250 it's a little bit higher I'm thinking the engine coolant temp might have been right 
because I didn't change it to Celsius. So I ain't going to change anything right now, but we'll see as it goes. Uh, the cat temp, yeah, they might be Celsius. So I may have to translate those later. I didn't think that it, they would switch over going to a new vehicle, but I guess by default that's where they go. So, yep, cat temperature and the uh, coolant temperature are Celsius, and I'll put in the video what the actual Fahrenheit is on that. Uh, so those of you who like the metric system will probably like this part of it. But again, as we can see, those are the RPMs. Now the cat seems to be like it's pretty well near its warm temperature. Got a lot of fluctuation though on our fuel air mixture. Right there. Short term, not doing too bad. Long term is pretty much stuck at zero on that one because it, I ain't using it. We're just using this one. So, let's see how long it actually takes to actually go down. Again, uh, there are far more options you can use for foreskin to monitor a lot of stuff. I'm just doing it for this video, but you've seen how you go about setting things up in it. And you can use a tablet, and I love using this tablet because it gives you far more real estate to view stuff. Imagine viewing these uh, PIDs on a cell phone. They're a lot smaller, so you have to expand them up, which means you can't see as many on the screen. So... How long will it take to warm this thing up? We're still running 1250 basically for RPM as you can see there. But it is warming up to 45 degrees Celsius now. And it looks like the cats are pretty the cat is pretty much where it's going to be. It might hit 550 maybe. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what it gets at. Oh, we got a drop in uh, already. 14.58. Will it drop down is the question. It's still a little bit on the high side. Still up there yet. Well, folks, it looks like uh, 900 RPM for the EcoBoost, whereas the uh, you know the Duratec is a lot lower, 600 RPM. Um, not seen any change. I've been sitting here for a while, and I think 900's it. I'll verify it, but if I don't put anything in the video, then hey, that's what it is. 900 for the two-liter EcoBoost, which is a fairly high idle, I thought, but. Uh, Anyway, this is Mac T. Member, like, subscribe, join, all that good stuff. And uh, hopefully, you figured out how long it takes for your Duratec or EcoBoost to warm up. I don't have a 2.7 or, or a 3.7. I doubt a 3.7 would be any different or a 3.5. And a 2.7, probably not much different either. But yeah, it is what it is. And I uh, hope you all enjoyed the video. Learn a little bit of something about the Forescan app. And also, how long does it take to warm up your engine to get ready to drive? Which comes down to really minutes. So, uh, it doesn't take all day to warm up. That's for sure.